put off by how long this video is, don't worry. I tend to jam-pack my videos with as much content, as many details as I possibly can, and I try to talk pretty fast. So while the video is a bit on the long side, I don't repeat myself and I get into a lot of details about the subject that, you know, pretty much anything that I feel I can comment on and that I think you might find interesting. But hey, if the video is just too long for you to watch, chances are I recorded a shorter version and the link will be in the description box. It's not an inferior video, it's merely a Cliff's Notes version of this very video. Dark Knight Rises Movie View Following the events of The Dark Knight, which I will not be spoiling here, don't worry, Batman is no longer necessary. There have been some new laws put in place and organized crime is a thing of the past. So Bruce Wayne has hung up the cape and retired to the East Wing of Wayne Manor where the staff doesn't go except to bring him food because apparently Nolan's a big fan of Beauty and the Beast, I guess. But when Bane in a mysterious figure with a mask comes to Gotham. He finds that he may have to don the mask and cape again. But is he enough to stop Bane? This right here is how you finish a trilogy. This is how you end an epic. I can't believe what I just watched. This movie is fantastic. I will be, you know, doing the critical thing as usual, but there's frankly relatively little to criticize in this. In fact, let's just get it out of the way immediately. There's one sort of romantic kind of thing that really comes out of nowhere, and it can be a bit difficult to keep track of what's going on and you know, people's motivations and what exactly will do what and, you know, such at times. And I think that is more or less it. Also, I guess you, you could say that this, in a lot of ways, this tops the Dark Knight. Excuse me. I know I didn't I half expected Nolan not quite to be able to do it either, but he did. The one thing that this doesn't have that The Dark Knight has, which is in that movie's favor, is Heath Ledger as the Joker. And yeah, you know, it, you just, for obvious reasons, you couldn't, you know, rest in peace, Heath. But yeah, that, actually, that brings me very nicely to the new villain. Tom Hardy is just, he, he dominates the screen. The dude, most of his acting, as far as the face, which is the actor's, you know, one of their best tools, he's limited to acting with his eyes and, yeah, yeah, basically his eyes. Those are the only part of his face that he can really emote through his eyes and his eyebrows. And he pulls in, he just, the, the performance that he hands in is astounding. He is just terrifying in a, in a very physical sort of way, where the Joker was kind of this unpredictable entity that you just, you know, couldn't quite place. Bane is just, you know, he will destroy you physically and just with, with no real no kind of hesitation. There, There is this real conviction to him that makes him really terrifying. You know, you, you don't... He doesn't have the unpre unpredictability of the Joker, but he has this determination that makes him equally... Well, not quite, quite equally, but extremely terrifying. And he is a very memorable villain. 
if, again, not quite, you know, Heath Ledger's Joker. Catwoman is freaking perfect. I honestly, as with Heath Ledger, when Anne Hathaway was cast, I was thinking, eh, can she really do it? She can. She could. She did. It's just, it's perfect. The voice, the, the, the outfit, the moves, the attitude, the, the, the tension between her and Batman, and you know what kind of tension I'm talking about, is just, it's just perfect. It's just incredible. I love how they did it. And they, they treat her as she should, as she should be, and as I would say she's, I don't know, I haven't watched everything live action, but I really don't think that she's been done this way before, and that is as a femme fatale, femme fatale. Sorry, Frenchmen, French people. And yeah, you know, sh she's extremely attractive, very dangerous, and you don't know if you can trust her or not, you know, and that works really well with the, the film. It really, it, it goes into the plot, you know. They do with Catwoman what we kind of wished they had done with Black Widow, you know. Just, yeah, enough said. Bruce Wayne and Batman, again, you know, fantastic performance by Bale. The voice is somewhat back, but I, it wasn't as grating this time as it was in The Dark Knight. I don't think he uses it quite as much, or maybe he doesn't go quite as far with it. It certainly just wasn't as distracting as it was in The Dark Knight. This is a Bruce Wayne very... He basically, he has given up Batman for years when the movie starts, and he hasn't found something to fill that void with. So this is this is a Batman. Who, this is a Bruce Wayne who's lacking that, who's who's missing that, and he he just he can't find something else to put in its place. And yeah, it's it's very, it's it's really really gripping. The relationship between him and Alfred becomes somewhat strained because of this, because Alfred is desperate for his master to go and live, you know, to not just be a prisoner to this, you know, this thing of his past. Because again, when the movie starts, Batman is not necessary. Jim Gordon also gets some really nice, you know, important stuff to do as well as definitely Lucius Fox. I'd have to say this is the most Morgan Freeman has had to do in this entire trilogy, and it really works out well. We have a couple of new characters. I, Joseph, Joseph Gordon-Levitt as John Blake, this hot-headed cop who's just fantastic. You know, really, he's, you, you really get to like him, and he's just, he also has this determination and some, some idealism to him, and he's just, you know, a, a really good character. And, uh, what's her name, Melissa Tate, who is this businesswoman who, you know, works with Bruce, and they have some important you know, stuff that they work on, and I will not give any more away about that. Where the Dark Knight, you know, s s raises the, the tension to a certain level, and then just kind of, you know, keeps it there, just r relentlessly, just basically really torturing us in, in the nicest way, you know, it's, it's, these are both fantastic films, but yeah, they, they really do get us all the way up there and then just don't let us go until the movie's over. Where The Dark Knight set it, you know, at, at a certain level fairly high, this one sets it higher and then just keeps pummeling us and, and Bruce Wayne as well. There, there is an extraordinary amount of punishment dished out to Bruce Wayne and the audience in this movie and I thank Nolan for it. 
it makes the movie all the better. It is, it is something that you have to endure, but it also really makes the movie it's just a, an experience at the end of it. it. It's not just, you know, you, you don't let this movie go afterwards. You don't. It, it becomes, it, it goes into you. It, it becomes part of you almost in a way. Man, that sounded cheesy. I, I will go on to something else now. But yes, the tension, fantastic. It's just really high throughout. And the, the stakes, very much raised. The action is bigger and better than The Dark Knight. You know, we again have much better coverage of the martial arts fights than in Begins. And the chases are phenomenal. The vehicular chases, when you see the, the flying <laughs> contraption, the, the it is fantastic. I love what they do with it, and yeah, the the climax is amazing, and this really lives up to most expectations, I'd say, and surpasses many of them. There, the the effects are again mostly practical, and it really adds something that you know when. You know, you see things being blown up and these various things that they actually did that in real life, you know, as, as it's really amazing. I'd say this movie actually goes to the highest level it could without getting, without getting to be too much. And I think this is the perfect way to end the trilogy for a number of reasons, most of which I cannot go into here. But if you take my advice and go watch the movie, you will probably understand what I mean once you've seen it. The movie is longer than the other two. You know, these keep getting about 15 minutes longer each time. And it doesn't, you know, you, you don't feel like your time is ever being wasted. Again, it is it is somewhat draining, and it is is bleak and really really tough on you. But you know, it is fantastic, and they they make some really brave decisions on this one, as they did with the others. That I'd say really really pay off, and I I will not be giving any of them away. I suppose that more or less covers it. So, yeah, <laughs> watch this movie immediately. And be sure that you watch the first two first because it definitely, it, it is a much bigger experience to have watched the entire trilogy and to, you know, do not let this be the first you see of these new Batman movies. I've reviewed other parts of this series. The links are in the description box. Please rate and comment, and hey, if you like this video, that subscribe button's just waiting for you to click it.